Hello, welcome to News Click. You're watching Present, Past and the Future and I am Nilanjan Mukhopadhyay. In less than a hundred days, the entire process for Lok Sabha elections is going to begin. When the election commission announces uh, the schedule for the elections and then the counting. Now, very recently in the assembly elections, the BJP was voted out of power in three states. There are a few major takeaways which happened from these results. One is that the Congress was unable to convert decisively the loss in the support of the BJP. The swing away from the BJP was not matched by the swing in favor of the Congress because it did not have any alliances. It may have decided not to have any alliances for tactical reasons, basically because it wanted to show that what it can get on its own. It has served the message and immediately after the elections, Various other political parties, most importantly the Bahujan Samaj Party and the Samajwadi Party said that they are going to extend external support to the Congress ministries in these three states. Not that in Chhattisgarh they actually require any support, but in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh this is extremely vital. There is another very important message which we get is that as yet there is no single individual leader who has the capacity to pose a challenge to Narendra Modi at a national level. So now, how does things look at? You know, in 2014, when we go back and look at the results, we will find that the BJP had got 282 seats with just 31 percent of popular vote. Along with its allies, it was around 37 percent, which means that a huge amount, 63 percent of people did not vote for the BJP or for its alliance partners. In 2014, the index of opposition unity was at its all-time low. There was no alliances between opposition parties virtually in most states. As a result of which, in fragmentation of anti-BJP votes, the BJP, even with 30-31% or even 32%, they managed to win a majority of the seats, first time after 30 years that any single party was able to get a majority on its own. It becomes very important, therefore, to talk about what is the likely scenario how are uh, things looking at the moment? Is there any possibility of alliances coming up at the moment? What is going to be the, the best thing which can be done? Should there be, most importantly this question is that should there be an alliance at the federal level or should there be one at the state levels, you know, across different states? Now to discuss this, I am going to be in conversation with E. Sridharan, who is the director of the University of Pennsylvania Institute of Advanced Studies and Rizwan Kesa, an historian with very keen interest in uh, politics, who is also the director of the Center for Comparative Religions and Civilizations, Jamia Milia Islamia. Welcome to the program, the two of you. Rizwan, let me begin with you by looking at, you know, we immediately have crossed an election and we are right in the middle of very early campaign trail which has already started, you know, as they say in Hindi that Bigul Bajna Bajadiya is Sabne. How are you looking at the emerging political scenario? Where exactly are you seeing a possible alliances coming up as far as the opposition parties are concerned? Where are the alliances of the BJP standing? Because the BJP has had a problem in the reverse, that is, some of their alliance partners continuing to have problems like the Shiv Sena or some allies of the NDA leaving it, you know, like you have had in Bihar, you have had Upendra Kushwaha quitting, you had had Jitan Maji quitting some months ago. You have had these kind of peculiar problems. The Akali Dal does not seem to be very happy about several aspects of this government. How are you broadly speaking looking at this entire thing purely from the political sense of it? One thing that seems uh, pretty clear that other than BJP, no other political party can really think of an all India presence in a robust manner. In view of the fact that the way Congress was reduced to whatever number of seats in 2014, they are still smarting under kind of a defeat, fear, whatever. 
However, you will have to recognize the fact that there has been kind of a leadership crisis in Congress establishment, which the party seems to be overcoming now. Mm -hmm. Rahul is able to establish himself whichever way you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the manner in which the media, the other opposition party, especially uh, the party in power, uh, BJP, kept on projecting him as Rahul Baba, Papu, etc. He has been able well, to convey this the impression. The this assembly elections where Papu pass ho gaya. Yeah. Exactly. Not only Papu pass ho gaya, the manner in which he carried the conviction, the kind of campaign, the issues that he flagged, etc. I think if that's the tempo which is maintained, it's vitally important for Congress to register a significant element of victory in order to strike alliance. If you're talking about pre-poll alliance, now the pre-poll alliance is not only of the ideology or the political possibility, but it's also a question of leadership. The manner in which divergent voices are emerging from different parts of India, uh, that doesn't really augur well. And in the sense that it gives this impression that people are more interested in the leadership question than forming an alliance in a way. Number two, very quickly to say, many, many of these parties governing parts of India, such as Andhra Pradesh or Bengal or somewhere else, they think that for the sake of the country and democracy, it's important to join hands in order to defeat BJP. But then that is still looks like a possibility and a slogan. But then to translate into a distinct political reality, they got to work harder on the ground. You know, Sridhar, if we actually look at things, you know, as to how it has happened, this entire idea of Mahakatpandan. Now, I have argued that this has primarily been foisted upon the nation's imagination by the BJP because they have felt that it would suit them if there is going to be a Narendra Modi versus XYZ fight. Uh, ideally speaking, Rahul Gandhi with his previous image of being somebody who is not very smart, somebody who is a papu, you know, in, uh, you know, somebody who is not really you know, up to matching Modi in terms of the political charisma in, among the people. Uh, if you ask BJP leaders in private about their nightmare situation, they say that we fear an aggregation of state elections. Uh, yet there has been some revival, even from the opposition of a federal alliance. You know, Chandra Babu Naidu did talk about it. Sharad Pawar has also been talking about it. So there are various straws in the wind. There are regional leaders who are very skeptical about it for their own political aspirations, their own ambitions. Leaders like Mamta Banerjee leaders like KCR, though he's more identified with the BJP, various other people. There is definitely skepticism. And of course, this huge question mark that how are the big two regional players, Mayawati and Akhilesh Yadav, how are they going to play? Because 80 seats of UP possibly will have the key to the heart of, of Indian politics. Uh, let me just, uh, as you said, uh, presidential style contest between uh, Modi and uh, whether it is Rahul or anybody else in the opposition. The BJP has been forcing will, it. Will be advantageous to the BJP. And, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen because I think putting together a Mahagathbandhan, a sort of federal alliance is going to be a nightmarishly difficult proposition. It's going also to be, maybe unwise, would you say? Uh, I, well, uh, rationally, it may be if they are able to decide on seat sharing arrangements, but that's going to be nightmarishly difficult state by state. Mm. So most likely, I think what we are going to see is a state by state seat sharing arrangements. Mm. Now, to step back a bit from this, you know, if you look at uh, comparative coalition experience around the world and you look at coalition theory, there are two rough formula uh, formulae. One is the what's called the sitting getting formula. That is a party which occupies the seat gets the gets, gets the seat and uh, now that implies a certain rigidity because you can't shift according to the way the ground level uh, uh, situation is shifting. The second theory is what is called perceived pivotality. That is a party with a small vote share but which can be a bridging vote share, make the difference between loss and victory, mm. will can be in a position to demand more seats because it's pivotal to victory. This is what the B BSP actually has historically that been is its strategy. That is the as to why possibly in Madhya Pradesh they are demanding far more than… They were Madhya. demanding far more, pivotality, yeah. perceived pivotality. They and tried to exploit that, but the Congress rejected that yes. and the result was they won very narrow victories in so Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. So who in this tussle to you, you know, that yeah. is, uh, scoring brownie points over each other between the BSP and the Congress at the end of December 11, when the verdict came out, who do you think had the last laugh? Who do you think made the right choice in terms of not 
uh, succumbing to the uh, other person's demand? Uh, I think the BSP has had the last laugh because they are now pivotal in the post-election uh, scenario in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. Uh, so in a sense, they can be seen as uh, exploiting their pivotality even post-election. They tried to exploit it pre-election to get a bigger share of right. seats allocated to them but for contesting, but that didn't work. But just in, the, in the end, they are looking like being pivotal in these two states. Right. Uh, now, let, uh, let me just check with, you know, Rizwan, no, Sridharan is saying that the BSP has had the last laugh, they are not going to be pivotal. How does this, you know, according to your mind, play in UP? There are two, two distinct possibilities. One is that we may see a BJP versus the SP, BSP, RLD plus Congress. The other is that they do not touch the Congress, they leave out the Congress. You know, of these, there is the, the pros and cons of both approaches for within the BSP and the SP is being talked about. How do you look at uh, this entire, uh, as far as UP is concerned? Uh, uh, let me very uh, quickly join uh, the issue with uh, yeah, sure. Shri Dharan. Say, for instance, the kind of alliance BSP is struck with uh, Ajit Jogi in Chhattisgarh. Well, it backfired on it. What, what happened to them? It's yeah. completely like wiped out. Yeah. As far as Madhya Pradesh is concerned, yes. I mean, in, in a way, she was no, calculating. I have, a, I have a take on that as to why in Chhattisgarh the Congress was able to, to get the swing in its favor. Whereas they failed to get the swing against the BJP from Madhya Irrespective Pradesh. of the swing, irrespective of the swing, uh, Nilanja, let me tell you, I mean, it looked as if Congress had done a great blunder and missed the bus again. And now you see the result is something vastly different. Look at Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh. Nobody can deny that the presence of uh, Dalit uh, Samaj in all these places could have translated into more number of seats, etc., etc. But I think much more than that, what was vital for the Congress for its own survival was to have gone it alone that it did and it proved that on its own, it can hold the fort. It had to prove it to itself. It had to prove it had to, to, to prove itself. To its cadre and, and it had to prove to and the also to the also. larger society. And in a way, okay, of course, everybody would agree that victory margin is cylinder. And yet, the fact remains that in terms of sheer number, and against you know the you know heavy so what will odds. In UP? Will there be a four-way alliance between? against the BJP of all the four coming together? Or I, the think, I think people in their, in their best interest of their survival, they should go for Mahagadbandan type as it happened in Bihar a uh, couple of years ago. Right. They should go for the same thing because it's a finally a question of their own survival. It's just not the question of let survival me, of the let Congress. Me, let me ask Sridharan, you know, suppose in the event of a four-way, four-party alliance in UP against the BJP, will it not a, uh, allow the BJP to go in for what we call reverse polarization strategy. Secondly, is that this argument that uh, the Congress vote share essentially comes from the upper caste. So best would it to leave it aside so that it cuts into the BJP vote base. The moment you bring the Congress into an alliance which is dominated by Dalits and by OBCs, and by uh, various other uh, social groups, there is a possibility that the number of Brahmins will not come be as enthusiastic towards the alliance as it would have been if the Congress was on its own. No, I think the vote pooling logic uh, would dominate over this uh, fear of loss of upper caste votes. Uh, the vote pooling logic, uh, what is difficult to implement in a coalition is the seat sharing arrangement, the agreement, and not only how many seats, but which seats, which particular seats you contest in. Are you going to go by the past performance? Are you going to go by where you were number two? Or, and uh, that is going to be very difficult to decide uh, between uh, in, in UP, in the context of two major parties, SP and BSP, and two minor parties, that is Congress and uh, uh, Ajit Singh's party. So uh, while the logic of vote pooling would seem to be indicated to be able to perform, pose an effective challenge to the BJP's dominance. Uh, the actual seat sharing in terms of number of seats and which seats is going to be very difficult to put together. But uh, what one can predict fairly comfortably uh, is that a sweep, 71 seats or... Is not going is, to be possible for the yes, BJP in yeah, any case. There will probably be a net loss of seats 
how much it depends upon in the fact, swing in fact, and the they, effectiveness they, of the lines. There have been some projections made on the basis of the vote shares which has come from uh, the three states and uh, the likely scenario based on the current narrative not being altered dramatically by the BJP which means that Mr. Modi is unable to convert it into a single issue election like it was there in the case of 2014 where it was vote out the policy paralyzed UPA and bring somebody who had done a Gujarat, you know the Gujarat model to be replicated. It is always very difficult for an incumbent to get votes on the basis of what it has achieved. So in the absence of any national imagination at the moment, it is going to be very difficult. Uh, now based on that, there appears that at least in the Hindi heartland where the BJP won 196 seats last time and along with its allies about 211 seats, there is going to be massive erosion as much as 60 to 70 percent seats are we talking about you know, from the Hindi heartland, which means that it is going to come down dramatically. So it really opens up the entire ball game. You know, how are you looking at that? What are the various possibilities that we may see post-2019 verdict? Say, for instance, uh, uh, the manner in which PJP till recently has been trying to project and consolidate its vote bank is been exactly reversed to what it was trying to do in 2014. Now the advantage Congress and other political parties contesting against BJP is that the BJP has been in power for last four and a half years. Right? So the narrative has been reversed. Now corruption charges against the Congress in 2014, all those charges has come to the doorstep of the government, the present government. But they are getting skeletons from the past also. You know, you have the Augusta Westland corruption case once again come alive. You know, the live wire and skeletons are two different things. Okay. If you look at the live wires of corruptions, they, they reach the corridors of power so, which, of the present discussion. What you trying to say is that Mr. Modi does not have the issue of corruption. I think, I think there, has been, there has been considerable loss of the charisma. Considerable loss of the charisma, the, the number of people attending his meeting, the kind of chants that Personal one used to popularity hear. popularity of Modi has come Certainly, down. certainly, the kind of chants that one used to imagine. I mean, I, I can never imagine a slogan which is reserved for uh, Harar Mahadev. Harar Mahadev, Ghargar Mahadev and Harhar Modi, Ghargar Modi. I don't know how many people are willing to shout that kind of slogan in 2019. Well, elections like 1984 or 2014 happen once in an epoch. It will not happen. There will not be a 2014. So that way, yeah, exactly. It can exactly. be a different thing. It is also possible that the BJP may eventually, something may happen very dramatic within the next 100 days and the BJP may do even better than 2014. Based on today's narrative, it is going to be very difficult. So either one point which came out constantly during that assembly elections, especially once the verdict was coming out that it is not the Congress which won the elections, but it was the BJP which lost elections, that the Congress is not able to come up with a counter uh, program. It is not enough to say that the BJP did this wrongly, BJP did that wrongly. What are you going to do when you come to power, if at all you do? So does policies and principles play any role in terms of getting votes and in terms of cohesing uh, an alliance? Uh, you know, principles is something which doesn't come directly into the campaign. Usually it has not. Policies do in the sense that policy, effects of policy, effects of past policies do. But uh, I would agree with you that the Congress has won these elections uh, more on the strength of anti-incumbency and rural distress especially, these three state elections, and not on the strength of its own counter story. It has not managed, even the Congress alone doesn't have a strong counter story, let alone a very loose possible Mahagat Bandhan having a counter story. Uh, so that is something which uh, they will have to construct at very short notice given that we are going to have elections announced in about a couple of months from now. Mm. So that counter narrative or counter story has not yet gelled and not yet uh, you know, been uh, credibly put forward to the public. Rizwana, last word from you, you know, counter strategy, a counter program. Uh, normally we have seen in India, alliances are put together post poll. You have always had, it was the BJP which began in 98, this entire idea of national agenda of governance. The UPA was also formed in 2004, post the elections. You know, it is only, you have, a, you have alliances, but you have a front thereafter. So regardless of, uh, 
of how the verdict goes, you know, do you see, uh, you know, in terms of an alternate uh, programs in any way preventing the Congress from becoming, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the epicenter of a new alliance? Two things that I would say, in an alliance what happens that not only you transfer your uh, assets to your partner, you also transfer your liability. And every political party has set of assets and liability. Mm. Therefore, I think under the circumstances, each one being strong in their respective position should fight this election on their own strength. Mm. With this understanding that as what Sridharan said, you know that you get on the basis of the seats that you have earned. You earn your seats on the basis of your own campaign. Put it on the table for negotiation and say that, well, well, here is an alliance that we form, as you are saying, mm. post-poll alliance. I think that's the best time. If you go for Mahagadbandan pre-poll alliance, then... It could be counterproductive. Liability and assets. You do not know whose liability is going where and whose assets are going where. Because even if you look at Mayabati, she is carrying her own sets of liabilities. Mind you, the very fact that, you know, you were, we, we, we've been talking about mm. silence of the people. I think silence of the people have also been under coercion. Uh, silence of Shri Mulayam Singh Jadab in certain context. He pulled out of Mahagat Bandhan in Bihar at the last minute. Yes. Everybody knows conditions in which he pulled out. So there have been occasions where Mayabati maintained stoic silence course, where she put him in voluble. There are reasons of these So therefore, my, my submission, uh, Nilanjan, is that keep your assets and liability with you. Contest on your own strength. You have your own pockets of influence. Mobilize your maximum resources. Save the country, as you say. Save the democracy, which is the dire need of the hour. Well, thank you very much for coming and joining me. I think there's one basic agreement between, uh, you know, at the end of the discussion between our two guests, you know, which is that, that both parties, you know, both uh, the Congress as well as the BJP are or rather, you know, to say it this way, you know, that what we are going to see is basically state level alliances at different parts. Quite a repeat of what happened in 1989 when you had uh, the Janta Dal at one hand, you know, aligning with the BJP on one side and the left on the other side. And after elections, you know, though the Congress was still the largest party, it was not the Congress which formed the government, but something else. So I see very dramatic and interesting times in the next 100 days in India. We'll keep talking about this as we come closer to the elections. Thank you very much for joining and watching this program.